A long, long time ago, little non bi fairy was in their history class, sitting there, listening to the teacher talk about something. And they couldn't help but wonder, why? Why am I in history class? What good does it do me to learn about a bunch of dead people? So non bi fairy rose their little hand and asked the teacher, teacher, why? Why? Why are we learning about history in schools? And the teacher said, those who do not learn their history are doomed to repeat yeah. it. Sitting here in 2020, that seems like a ridiculous reason to learn history. I mean, basically all we're doing in 2020 is seeing history repeat itself. So what's the deal here? If we're learning history in schools, why do we keep seeing the same issues come up over and over and over again? Well, I would argue that it's what we're teaching is history and how we're teaching it. And today, that's what we're gonna look at. I'm non bi fairy and this is Queer to Help. If you're not familiar with the series, the way that this runs is the first Saturday of every month we cover an issue or a topic related to the LGBTQ plus community, and each Saturday for the rest of the month, we showcase an organization that addresses that issue. If that sounds like the kind of content you would like to see more of, don't forget to subscribe and ring the little bell thing so that we'll see you whenever we upload more content. This month is October, and October is LGBTQ plus history month. So what better way to honor the month long holiday than to discuss the issue of teaching LGBTQ plus history in schools. The conversation regarding this has been going on for years and Scotland was the first country to make the leap of mandating LGBTQ plus history as part of the national curriculum. Other countries have handled it a bit differently. Canada and Australia, for example, have guidelines or recommendations to include LGBTQ plus history in the history curriculum wherever the teacher decides it's appropriate. But what the research is finding is that teachers largely are not making the effort to put those figures into their classroom discussions. In the United States, the debate rages on, and some states have actually fairly recently decided to include LGBTQ plus history in their curriculum. California was the first state to do it back in 2011, but Illinois, Colorado, and New Jersey all decided to mandate the inclusion of LGBTQ plus history in their state curriculum last year, in 2019. But those decisions have sparked a pretty heated debate, both inside those states where it's already been determined and outside in other states where it may become a discussion in the future. Before we get into this debate and what the conversation looks like, let me know where you stand. Tell me in the comments. Do you think we should be teaching LGBTQ plus history in schools or don't you? Remember, this is a place where we are learning together, so keep the conversation respectful. Today, we're gonna to be breaking down this debate. First, we're gonna lay out why people think that we should be teaching LGBTQ plus history in schools. Then we're going to talk about why people think we should not be teaching it. And after we've laid out all the points, we're going to talk about what I think and hopefully what you think about whether or not we should be teaching it in schools. We're also going to be talking about what obstacles are in the way of seeing this history being taught in schools and discussing maybe what we can do to help and what the organizations that we're gonna be talking about this month are doing to address this issue. 
First though, let's lay out specifically what we're talking about here. We're only talking about LGBTQ plus history. We're not talking about LGBTQ plus inclusion in schools more broadly, and we're not talking about the inclusion of LGBTQ plus topics in sexual education. Those are both very important topics and we will discuss them in the future, but that is not the purpose of today's video. What we are talking about is the contributions of LGBTQ plus people, their experiences, within a historical context, and the fight for queer liberation. Before we go any further, content warning. Homophobia, transphobia, and discussions of religion and race. The first argument we're going to talk about for the inclusion of LGBTQ plus history is representation. We've all heard a lot about representation in recent years regarding media and history. It's important to see people who look like you or have similar experiences to you represented in the media we consume, whether that's textbooks in the classroom or TV shows and movies that we watch at home. The second point for teaching LGBTQ plus history in schools is simply that it's a matter of safety. Internally, it may help members of the LGBTQ plus community see people like them and validate their own experiences, which is good for their mental health. But it also benefits them because if experiences like theirs are normalized in a classroom setting, then it may increase the empathy of their peers and reduce the bullying that they experience from classmates and potentially the homophobia and transphobia that they may experience from teachers. The third point for teaching LGBTQ plus history in schools is that it allows for discussion of in-group, out-group dynamics. Who we include in curricula is important. It establishes who counts as members of our society and who does not. By bringing discussion of in-group, out-group dynamics to the classroom, it opens up discussion for power relation and how different groups relate to one another. The first point against teaching LGBTQ plus history in schools is that it's immoral. Based on particular groups' religious beliefs, the experience and identities of LGBTQ plus people may be considered immoral or wrong. And therefore, some people think that these discussions do not belong in schools. The second point against teaching LGBTQ plus history in schools is that there are other histories that we should be teaching first. In many countries where this discussion is being had, there are other histories that need to be represented. In America, for example, we should also be teaching Black history and Latine history and Native American history. There are a lot of people that have contributed and are part of our community that we should be recognizing in the curriculum. And this argument against teaching LGBTQ plus history in schools is simply that we should put those histories in our textbooks first. We should prioritize those voices first. The last point against teaching LGBTQ plus history in schools that we will be talking about is why. People are not sure that we need to include this history in schools. They don't understand the benefits involved and they don't think that representation in and of itself is that important. These are the arguments I found in my research, both for and against teaching LGBTQ plus history in schools. If you have any other points that you would like to add go ahead and add them in the comments so that maybe we can talk about those as well. Many young LGBTQ plus people in schools struggle with mental health and part of it is feeling alienated from their community or feeling like what they're doing is wrong or that their experience is wrong. So part of the argument for is that we validate them by including experiences like theirs in our curriculum. Another part of it is by teaching cis and straight people the experience of LGBTQ plus people throughout history 
they can develop empathy and understanding for the experiences of their classmates next to them and that may help limit or minimize the bullying that the LGBTQ plus community faces in schools. I think that a big point that maybe isn't being recognized enough is this discussion of in-group, out-group and how it can benefit both groups of students or all the students really because if we talk about power dynamics and intergroup dynamics in the classroom and explain why it's important that we include people from different communities in our curricula and in our considerations whenever we're making decisions for society as a whole. It helps improve critical thinking skills so that one student can compare their position and their situation to that of other students or other groups of people. Part of the problem that we're seeing in history classes is we almost constantly teach history as though it's something that happened a long time ago, but the reality is that we deal with many of these social issues right now and we should be teaching in a way that contextualizes historical issues in a current framework. And by discussing civil rights issues, including LGBTQ plus history, we can better understand where movements are now by understanding how they've developed and why they have been and are important. Now that we've kind of summarized the pros, let's look at the cons. As I mentioned, the first argument against is an issue of morality. Largely based on religious ideology, some people believe that it is wrong or immoral for LGBTQ plus people to exist the way that they do. And so therefore they don't believe that their students, their children should be taught about an immoral lifestyle. And that's questionable for many reasons. First of all, almost all democratic countries, to my knowledge, have at least some level of religious freedom. Therefore, it is not the place of any one religion to dictate the curriculum of their community because not everyone in your community may practice the same religion as you. Their understanding of morality may be different than yours and you wouldn't want anyone to infringe on your ability to practice your religion so you shouldn't infringe on other people's right to practice religion or not. The second con, and this one was the hardest one for me to read about because members of black and brown communities are right. We should be teaching black history and Latina history and Native American history and Asian American history in a meaningful and truthful way that really recognizes the harm that we've done to those communities and the harm of the colonizing that's been done and how our country continues to benefit from those colonies even now. Not treated as like a distant thing that happened years and years ago so we're not responsible for that anymore but like really framing current issues as sort of the inheritance of these past like crimes against humanity. I agree, we should be teaching that history in schools, 100%. Without a doubt, we should be having honest discussions with kids and with adults about what our history actually is. But I don't think that that should come at the cost of LGBTQ plus history. I think that LGBTQ plus history should be taught alongside those other histories as the history of basically the human experience. Regardless of what country you live in, these discussions should be had in your history classrooms and in your other classrooms because those are the issues that still exist in society now. Those are the things that people are fighting against and fighting for right now. So those are definitely the discussions that we should be having in history classes. After all, those who don't learn from their history are doomed to repeat it, right? Well, we are repeating it. So we're obviously not learning these histories the right way. And while we're talking about how we're teaching history, I also wanted to address this other point. Something I've also heard people say is that people's sexuality doesn't matter and that their gender experience doesn't matter. If they're a historical figure, their accomplishments and their contributions being mentioned should be enough. And I think that that is pretty naive. Throughout history in various cultural contexts and 
if you saw the video that I did last month on queer incarceration, even now, parts of the queer experience have been and are currently criminalized. Due to that, the experience of queer people throughout history has been colored by this weird relationship to the more dominant culture, the heteronormative culture, or the cisnormative culture. Here's an example. Alan Turing, have you seen The Imitation Game? Yeah, that guy. He was gay, and definitely his contributions can probably not be overestimated. He helped the Allies win World War II. He is basically the father of computer science. He's a mathematician, he's brilliant, or he was brilliant. But I don't think you can fully understand his experience and his contributions without also understanding that he was a gay man. He was chemically castrated for homosexual acts or acts of gross indecency. I don't remember the exact wording. He was also suspected of aligning with the Communist Party simply for being gay because for some reason that was a stereotype that existed back then. I don't think you can accurately represent his place in history without understanding his experience as a gay man, and that he was forced to undergo castration because other people didn't agree with his lifestyle choices. I think that there are a lot of ugly things in our history, collectively, as a world, and we have to own up to that if we're going to teach history in an effective way to help ensure that human rights are protected in the future. That's the main goal of teaching LGBTQ plus history in schools from my perspective. The health and safety of students and ensuring the human rights not only of those students but of future generations. Another thing that I think that it's important to mention that has not yet been mentioned is that by including people who look like these students or who experience life in a similar way, we can actually engage those students in school better. Students are known to perform better when they connect to the material themselves. So including these topics that relate directly to the student in some way is helpful academically in addition to being like good for their mental and physical health. All right, so I've explained why I think that this is important. We've covered most of the main arguments for and against teaching LGBTQ plus history in schools. If you have any comments on that, go ahead and leave them down below. We can all learn from each other. I'm very much a proponent for teaching LGBTQ plus history in schools, and so are the organizations that we're gonna be talking about this month. Moving forward, there are some obstacles and issues that we need to consider. Within an American context, and specifically with certain states, there are no promo homo laws. And that means that no one is allowed to teach anything about homosexuality or the LGBTQ plus community or experience in general in schools at all, or they're only allowed to be mentioned during discussions of like sexually transmitted diseases and that sort of thing. Otherwise, you're not supposed to talk about homosexuality or any of that in the schools at all. And there are at least five states that have these laws. I think that this is definitely something we should talk about in a What's Transpired video to like break down exactly what is going on in these laws so we can figure out how to fight them. But the point is that if we're going to make progress towards making schools safe and inclusive spaces for all students, all of them, then we have to start breaking down the no homo promo laws or no promo homo laws, I don't know. Anyway, we need to address those if we're gonna progress forward. Another pretty significant issue that we'll be facing moving forward is the lack of training available to teachers. This is a conversation that we're having right now. So it shouldn't be a surprise that most teachers didn't learn about this in schools. They didn't learn about like significant LGBTQ plus historical figures probably. So, it is a little bit unfair to expect them to just like, bam, be ready for 
teaching this kind of content. And another obstacle that we will inevitably face is that our textbooks that we're using in most schools probably don't have this information either. I think that these are the three main obstacles that we're going to have to face is laws that are in the way, the lack of preparation for teachers, and the textbooks and media that are used for class don't necessarily have relevant or necessary information. This month we will be showcasing organizations that address these three main issues both domestically and abroad and if you want to be notified about when these videos are uploaded don't forget to subscribe and ring the little bell thing. Also if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like it and comment if you have any feedback about it and if you didn't like it then give it a thumbs down. Either way let me know what you think. I think that's basically it for today though, y'all. I love you. I'm non bi fairy. This is Queer to Help. Live your dream life.